here we go. Hour two, absolutely packed on a Friday, blazing five and 90 seconds. This is The Hurt. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, we're on iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. Joy Taylor is joining me. She's from Pittsburgh uh, and struggled through the slog fest of Mason Rudolph. Still think he sounds like a painter uh, for four hours. Greg Cosell is going to get called on the carpet next week. You know. He's got nothing. I'm not going to lie. I I thought about Greg last night. I was like, well. I don't see it. I got nothing for me. I'm interested to see what the tape says this week because <laughs> it's not very good. And now he was down to, you know, his third string receiver and his second back. But uh, NFL has suspended Miles Garrett indefinitely. Uh, he's out for the year, out for the playoffs. He's their best defensive player. He's a great player. He's sometimes Looney Tunes, though, late hit. Uh, you know, Mike Mason Rudolph, you know, my defense of him is if you're attacked at a bar, uh, you have a right to do whatever you have to do to survive. So a big, strong Miles Garrett hit uh, the quarterback late, jumped on top of him, and Miles Garrett tried to. You just you're, you're in a fight right there. I don't care what you grab. I'll, I'll grab your junk. You uh, whatever it is. I'm on the bottom. I'm a guy. You're bigger. You attack me. I'm going after anything. Eyes, car keys, I'm trying to survive. Uh, I do think the NFL will probably look at the tape, sprinkle around some fines to Mason Rudolph. They'll see a few images they don't like. Uh, Pouncey has been suspended three games. He'll appeal that, probably get it down to two. But let's not, let's not make uh, Miles Garrett the victim. I see this all the time in the American media, sports and political. Miles Garrett's a guy that's been doing this all year. This is an undisciplined team that came in with a message. Let's make him pay for it. Multiple hits above the shoulders, helmet to helmet hits. Cleveland should be absolutely grotesquely embarrassed. I'm surprised they didn't come out this morning and levy their own fines and suspensions. That would have been classy, but what am I expecting? But the NFL handed him down. Miles Garrett out for the year, um, you know, out for the playoffs. And it's they, they haven't made a final proclamation uh, or referendum on him. He's just out for the year in playoffs, and we'll figure out the rest of it later. Don't be surprised if he gets suspended for a month next year as well. So that's that's where we start this morning. A lot of both teams were fined two hundred and fifty grand. All right, uh, Blazing Five, this is the time of the year. You know, NFL teams get to this time of the year, and the NFL teams are like, okay, football matters. And I think it's time for us now. Football matters. Let's get all these right. Blazing Five, all of our odds provided by Fox Bet. Here we go. That's a hot one. Let's blaze it up. Fire it up. It's Collins Blazing Fox. Texans and Ravens. I'll take Houston plus four at Baltimore. Deshaun Watson in his career in November. I mean, he's always good. It's been his best month. He is 4 and 0, completion percentage mid 70s. And by the way, you know how good Russell Wilson is this year? Only Russell Wilson has accounted for more touchdowns than Deshaun Watson. Texans offense right now since they elevated their running game, they've got a real offensive line, a pro bowl level left tackle, and they can run the ball. Houston's top 5 in total yards, rushing yards, red zone percentage. It's a number here. I'm going to take Houston plus four. It's four and a half in some places. We'll just go four. I think the Texans with the upset. Not much of an upset, really. I like them a lot. 28-26. Broncos and Vikings. I'm betting a number. Denver ten and a half to side here. Listen, Minnesota off a big Sunday night win. They don't win those games ever. They beat the Cowboys. They're going to pull back. This is going to be a low-scoring game. Vic Fangio for Denver is one of the better defensive guys in the league, and he knows Mike Zimmer well. The Broncos' defense ranks top four in yards, passing yards, and red zone touchdown percentage, which is amazing when you consider how bad their offense has been, so their defense is often on the field all game. Their 4-1 and is Denver against the spread over their last five. For the last five opponents, they've held under 20 points. Denver's not a terrible team. You don't like their record. Denver beat Cleveland. Okay, Denver's a re- Denver with a backup beat Cleveland. Denver's a real team. They've lost three games, expiring clock. The Chicago loss was horrible officiating. This is a very, very competitive game. Denver uglies it up. Broncos cover. Now, I'll take the Vikings to win 26-20, but I think it's ugly and choppy, and I'll take the points. Jets at Redskins. I'll take the Jets plus two. Redskins have the worst offense ever. They haven't scored a touchdown in a month. Um, Their offense is not only the worst in the NFL, they're last in scoring. They've scored nine points or fewer in five games. And now they're on a rookie quarterback 
who probably shouldn't be playing Dwayne Haskins, and Jay Gruden, one of their smart coaches, the coach they fired, now what's their offense? Because he was keeping it afloat. They're last in virtually everything offensively. They're 0-4 at home. And by the way, the Jets announced this week Adam Gase is the coach. What does that mean? Jet players, they want to put good stuff on tape for Coach Adam Gase. Okay, Adam Gase isn't going anywhere. So don't think you can screw off and get a new coach. Adam Gase is coming back. Watch the players play hard. Jets win this football game 27-23. Cardinals at 49ers. Like it. I love it. I'll take Arizona plus 10. Anybody else watching these games besides people that live in Phoenix? Arizona's a real football team. You you think the Raiders are the big shock of the league? I don't know. Arizona's pretty good. I'm getting 10s. 49ers are still banged up with some of their receivers on the perimeter. The Cardinals are 5. I've been betting the Cardinals for weeks. They're 5-1 and one against the spread last six games. By the way, Arizona's won 8-9 of nine meetings. They always played Seattle tough. Uh, Arizona's better than we think. And right now, Jimmy Garoppolo's coming off a bad game. And a lot of this is he doesn't have all his weapons. George Kittle's banged up. Emmanuel Sanders. The first game they played was not a mirage. I think it's competitive. Niners win, but the Cardinals cover 27-20 San Francisco. Don't kid yourself on Arizona. They're not going away. Kyler Murray's really, really tough to defend. Wait until he gets an O-line and a defense. Chiefs at Chargers. Love the Chargers. Chargers getting four here. Do you know, this game's in Mexico, altitude 7,200 feet, right? Chargers went to Colorado to train in 7,000 feet. Kansas City didn't. Kansas City's not happy with the league. They said, no, we're going to stay in Kansas City. They're going to be sucking air by the second quarter. Chargers are like, we're not happy we're going to Mexico either. But we're going to go to Colorado on the mountains and train. Remember, what do the Chargers do? They can run the football. Phillip Rivers, for the record, uh, he'll drive me crazy in two-minute drills. He makes mistakes a rookie would make. But he leads the NFL in passing yards. They have excellent weapons. They have a good tight end. They can run the football. And Kansas City get, can't get people off the field. And if you look at the most rushing yards allowed this year in the NFL, you think Cincinnati's bad? They're the only team worse. Kansas City can't stop the run. Chargers can run. They trained in Colorado. You know, you're all telling me Cleveland still has a chance for the playoffs. Well, don't they have the... What's the record of the Chargers? Eh, kind of the same record. And you're telling me the Chargers have no shot? Chargers absolutely believe... Anthony Lynn's got to win games here. they got to win games here. Jobs are on the line with the Chargers, and I'm getting over a field goal. I'm going to take the Chargers to upset Kansas City 28-27. to Blazing five, all of our odds provided... By Fox Bet. Uh, let me let me uh, go to one game in particular. Lamar Jackson against Deshaun Watson. I like the Texans in this game. Um, uh, I think Lamar Jackson's a great kid, a great story. Um, it, 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 this is what's interesting about football. We forget this all the time. Lamar Jackson comes into the NFL. He's got a better coach right now than Deshaun Watson. He's got a better offensive line. He's got a better star running back. He may have a better defense, probably does, better secondary. Um, Baltimore is a better organization structurally with better players. They have better tight ends than Houston. Lamar Jackson's inheriting a really good roster and a really good organization, and he's been good. He's a coachable kid. He's working his butt off, and they're doing some things schematically that's taken the league a little while to pick up on, and they're getting better and better because they draft well. To me, Deshaun Watson is Andrew Luck. I just cross my fingers he survives. He's Andrew Luck. He comes into the NFL, impulsive owner, bad GM, wrong, or a coach we don't love, and a terrible offensive line. And Andrew Luck and Deshaun Watson win 11 games and win their division. It makes no sense. And they can't win games in the playoffs because, you know, they're not that good. They're saving the franchise. Deshaun is Andrew Luck. Hurt, had to take a bus last year to a game. He really is. He is so uniquely gifted like Andrew Luck. And I've said this before. Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers could not overcome what Deshaun has the last couple of years. Deshaun's Andrew Luck. Lamar's good. But there's a lot of Kaepernick with Lamar. He's got Harbaugh as a coach. He's got Greg Roman as a coordinator. It is a power-running team built around him with our feeling that, and, and for the record, Kaepernick beat Green Bay twice. Kaepernick got to a Super Bowl. Don't kid yourself. I got fooled by Kaepernick. For two years in this league, I would go on the air every day and go, I think that's the future of the NFL. 
So now I'm a little reluctant to go with Lamar Jackson. That's the future of the NFL. I think the future of the NFL is Deshaun Watson. Great athlete, can make plays, is, is, a, is a wizard, but eventually sits in the pocket, throws the ball, good high school, good college, good pro, good thrower. So when I see Deshaun Watson, I see Andrew Luck. When I see Lamar, I see a little Kaepernick. And in the end, I always felt luck, as long as he could stay healthy, it's a 15-year run. Kaepernick, I kind of felt fooled on him. Now, I do think Lamar has a more, throws the ball, how would I say this? Kaepernick had a huge arm, but the joke was everything was a fastball. Had no touch. Screen pass, throw it through a battleship. Where I think Lamar's got better touch. I think he's very coachable. I think he's got some leadership stuff. Kaepernick doesn't. But I like Houston in this game. And I said this yesterday, Deshaun Watson, here's another reason he's Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck came into this league, and because he had the neck beard, and he had a book club, and he didn't have a personality, didn't talk. All these other young quarterbacks, RG3, we fell in love with, and I'm like, no, nah, Andrew Luck's the good one. Deshaun Watson comes into this league. He, Mitch Trubisky in the same conference gets drafted over him. His coach starts Tom Savage over him. Then Patrick Mahomes comes in, and we talk about him more. And now just about the time we want to put our arms around Deshaun Watson and go, man, you are so good. You know, it's Lamar Jackson, guys, unbelievable. Like Luck and Deshaun, can we just put our arms around them? They're doing what I don't think other people can do. I don't think anybody else in my lifetime, maybe, maybe Russell Wilson, Andrew Luck and Deshaun Watson, wrong, Houston doesn't have a GM. Indy had the wrong one. The coach we don't love, bad old line, no running game, and you look up and they're winning their division. Tom Brady can't do that. I don't think Aaron Rodgers can do that. So I like the Sean this weekend. I like Houston. I think they're real good. And I'll tell you this. We all banged on this organization when they went and got Laramie Tunzel and gave up too many picks. That old line now, left side, it's a real old line. They've quietly, they have a real running game. So Deshaun now has got a left tackle and real NFL running backs. I know you all have Baltimore in the Super Bowl. Uh, I'd strongly consider Houston. I'd strongly consider it to me this morning... You know, Patriots, Houston, I totally buy that. I think we're a little high now on Baltimore, and we've forgotten Houston and Deshaun Watson. And, 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 and by, by the way, it's not that I don't like Lamar. I do, but they're doing some stuff schematically. Greg Cosell talked about it yesterday. <laughs> the league is kind of trying to figure out Baltimore. Like, everybody's figured out New England. They can't stop him. You can figure out Aaron Rodgers and Mahomes. You can't stop him. Baltimore's doing some stuff schematically, which is new, and people are kind of trying to figure it out. Here's Greg Cosell. It's very low risk, but extremely hard to defend. They play with multiple tight ends a lot. So what do defenses do? They line up with their base personnel, which means they have bigger, slower people on the field. And now they run their offense, the Ravens, this multiple run dimension offense that spreads you out horizontally. So I'm curious what defensive coordinators will do going forward because they're playing with slow people against Lamar Jackson. Yeah, interesting stuff. Can't wait for that. My favorite game to watch this weekend. I'll take the Texans to win that game outright. I don't think it's a big upset, and I think we're undervaluing Houston right now. Uh, by the way, next hour, uh, DeForest Buckner of the San Francisco 49ers, great defensive lineman. What's it like to play on that defensive line? Uh, if people can't double-team you, there's too much talent. He'll be joining us. Jason McIntyre, we're moving him up an hour. He'll be joining us in 30 minutes from now. Tomorrow's headlines today. Eric Dickerson, Ram season's kaput, in my opinion. His thoughts on that violent act last night by Miles Garrett, who's been suspended by the NFL for the year. We'll address all those things coming up. We're not even halfway home, packed on a Friday in the herd. Listen, very few times in your life have you ever gotten in your car during a storm and thought, man, I'm sure glad I went cheap on my wiper blades. Right now, Michelin has Michelin Endurance XD silicone wiper blades. They just put them through a 16,000-mile test, Alaska to Argentina. Sleet, snow, tundra broke a world record. They last two times longer as other blades and are available only at Walmart. They have Quad-Tech four-layer coated silicone. And that Quad-Tech silicone repels water, snow, hail, ice two times longer. Doesn't matter what the weather throws at you. So, listen, I'm just worried about, I live in California. I just want to get to the grocery store and, you know, have wipers get a few bugs or fog or so, smog, you know. But for a lot of people, for the next four months, it's real world weather. It's, it's sloppy out there. Upgrade to the new Michelin Endurance XD silicone wiper blades. Today they are only available at Walmart.